Welcome to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. Uh, my catchphrase is people tell me in the uh, OCD forums that Instagram Live part. Uh, I don't know if I should leave that in now after that. Maybe I will, maybe I'll change it. Um, so I wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about hope. This is the key message in OCD Recovery. When I was lost, alone, very, very stuck, I used to have very little hope of ever recovering, very little hope of ever getting better. That was where I was. Now, along that road, there was many inspirational moments where I felt hope lifting up. One of those great moments was obviously when I found Albert Ellis's work. That was a huge game changer because I could see how I could get under that chronic guilt and chronic anxiety. So that was a real game changing moment. And of course, when I found stoicism, that was that sort of really sort of paved the way for Albert Ellis's work and sort of got under so much of what Ellis was, uh, Ellis's messages. And that alone, I could see thousands and thousands of years of work that had sort of paved the way. I could see it all made sense, rational reality. It was reality that there was nothing to be scared of, that fear was an illusion. I could see that it was a myth. That completely changed my perspectives on fear. I could see these roadblocks didn't need to hinder me. They were myths, they were illusions. OCD was this great illusionist and fear was this great illusionist and I could see that so I could break those down and that opened up those paths of hope in my brain that then made that freedom, that sort of empowered position in my mind in terms of my life. Now, that didn't come just from Ellis and Stoicism. That came from looking at life in general, looking for people that inspired me in life in general. Uh, people like the likes of Tony Robbins, for example, who's probably the most successful life coach uh, in the world and changed thousands of lives, things I like about him, things I don't like about him. Um, but what I think is so great about what he did is just when, you, when I watched him, I found him so motivating. I found that he sort of made me feel so alive straight away. And I thought, well, that's what I really want to bring to the OCD community. That real inspiration, that when you're feeling low, that you can see hope that you can see that you can get better. You can see that you don't need to be held back by chronic anxiety and chronic fear. That changed so much for me. And that was in so many different inspirational speakers' work that when I was looking through it, in so, and I was watching so many of these videos, compulsively probably at the time, it wasn't great, but what I saw is I could see how they were setting the stage in my mind for those steps to feel really full of energy to go for it. And I needed that because even the term OCD felt like some all constraining, locked in like mechanism, some like octopus in my brain that was latched all around everything. So I felt like I couldn't get out. I couldn't get better. So that was key. I needed that catalyst to sort of ignite that fire of motivation to get me going. And I've done loads of videos on hope for this reason, because it's so key. Because when you're surrounded in your mind with OCD, with this just constant OCD negativity, it's very hard to even see an ounce of hope. So that's why that's so important. So those were really key parts of getting me in that sort of mindset to go for it, along with working out, uh, cardio, weight resistance training, get, going to bed at normal times, getting a healthier life, healthy nutrition, all these kinds of things, so that I genuinely felt so much better. Because what happens is when you're really struggling with OCD and anxiety, imagine you've got a bucket and the hole in it is OCD, and water's pouring out of that all the time. You're not going to fix that hole just yet because you're not recovered, but you're going to have to keep filling that bucket up so that the energy doesn't, go, doesn't all come out. So those things you can do by getting good sleep, working out, eating healthy. Now, obviously, it's going to latch to things like, what if I can't get some good sleep? Don't worry about that. Don't try and control sleep. Don't get perfectionist over sleep. It, it, you, people used to sleep in a ditch, used to sleep on the street, used to sleep on the floor and sleep on a horse in battle, everything. Don't get into controlling sleep. That does the opposite. Even if you, I was sleeping five hours a night for a long time and less and intermittent, constant nightmares for years. But I worked out, I ate healthy, I did all the things to really get myself motivated and that helped so much. Had I just stayed in bed, which I did lots of times, stayed on a laptop in bed, which I did lots of times, stayed uh, playing computer games or just watching TV box sets, complete life structure nightmare that was just this 
constant, as I coined the word, coasting, where you're just going along, functioning good enough, but you're not making that real impact into changing your OCD life, right? And when I say OCD and, and, and how it's constraining your life, that's the life at that point. That's not forever. Like OCD now, there's no chronic guilt, no chronic anxiety. I can't tell I've got OCD at all. Like I can't see it or experience it. But when on little things now and again, so like 99.999% of the time, you're not going to notice it. Little things, you'll notice it. Try and bite before you've noticed it there. You can't cure it. People who say they can, they don't understand it. You can't cure it, but you can't tell the difference living with it. That's what recovery is. And trust me, that's a hell of a lot better than a lot of diseases people live with, where they can't get to that level of recovery and that balance and that peace-like internal state. They can't do that because the disorder doesn't allow that, right? Well, this disorder does. This disorder, there's only an illusion of fear. Once you break that down, it doesn't have the grip. It doesn't have that constraining hold. So that's the first message that I wanted to talk about with motivation and hope. Get yourself around things that really lift you up. Get yourself around things that you love doing. Get yourself around things that are going to make your body feel alive. Now, exercise is one of those that's fantastic, okay? I, you never see someone say, oh, I regret working out four to five times a week. Doesn't happen. That can mean power walking. That can be training for a marathon. It doesn't matter what. It's for the mind. I work out now to keep in shape muscular and fitness wise so that I feel good, but it's mainly for mental. Not that if I didn't work out, I would have a problem, but the extra benefit is so worth doing. So that's what's key. So I think that's so important to highlight. Those are the first points. Now, when you're looking at all the different things in your life that are gonna lift you up, you've got to look at all the things that other people are overcoming with, what they, with things that they've got. And you can find tons of videos on YouTube like that. One of the first ones uh, for me was Viktor Frankl, who invented logotherapy, a Holocaust survivor, and one of the most um, game-changing books uh, in the world in sort of mindset called Man's Search for Meaning, which is, I watched one of his first videos where he was talking to a guy, I think he dived into a swimming pool where there was no water in it, become paralyzed from the neck down. And the guy said, this was the most life-changing moment of my life for the better. And I thought, fuck, how can this guy think that? That's like my worst nightmare. But then he gave a description of how it made him so aware of life and aware of the world and so connected into being in the moment, enjoying life, connecting with people and appreciating the things that he still had. And I, cut, and I, and I started watching Viktor Frankl. I then read the book. I mean, I was first introduced to Viktor Frankl's book in Seville, where I was living in, in Spain, uh, about oh, how many years now? 17 years ago. And I was sitting at a bar having some tapas. And there was a woman sitting there. And she told me, I, I was speaking to her. And I said to her, what are you doing here in Seville? And she said, look, I'm traveling all around the world, you know? And she was about 45, 46 at the time. She said, I'm traveling all around the world, you know, living my life in the present moment. And I said, what, what made you do this? And she said, I read this book about Viktor Frankl, who's a Holocaust survivor, about putting meaning into life. And my meaning in life is I want to live in the moment. I want to travel all around the world. I want to just enjoy the present moment. And I just want to go and experience great things. And this was long before Instagram community of people all traveling over the world for photos and stuff. This was no photos, just for her. And I thought, wow, what's this book? And then I was really inspired by that. And I, and I looked at the, what this book that she was suggesting. And then I never read it. And then years went past and I never read it. And then I read it. And then I really sort of looked at that and videos by Viktor Frankl and so on. And then many things like that opened my eyes. My sister had a friend who dived into the sea just from the seashore. But because the sea wasn't deep where he was, he landed straight into a sandbank that was raised and he got paralyzed from the neck down. And now he's, uh, um, he, he's a famous artist uh, who's doing lots and lots of paintings um, for, uh, since being paralyzed and completely lives in the moment uh, in relation to life. Uh, completely focused on uh, the things that he can do, not the things that he can't do. And then as life went past little moments like that, I saw so many of these moments in my life uh, because I was looking for them. I was looking for where people were in adversities. And then 
I was looking for why, why do you need these things? Why do you need that? Questioning things, like in just so many different ways, just looking at life in, that, in those ways to break down those irrational beliefs were there. Different injuries I had over the years. I thought, well, actually, do you know what? The pain's nothing compared to this other guy's pain. I can still stand it. I can still do this, 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 and this. And those tools were building and building. And then that was all coming in with the work that I was doing for OCD recovery. And that all changed my life by changing perspective and why I do what I do for a living now and why I do why my work and do and, and my, my whole life is completely focused on this basically is I'm trying to, with all the mindset shifts I had was trying then and still am trying now is to change OCD and anxiety so that people can see it's their perspectives in the now that's holding them back nothing else and that is uh, that is a way of being, you know. I've you, you can't just say these things without embodying it. You've got to live it. It's got to be your life. It's got to be your new life of how you're doing and how you're how you're living living through. And and it, it makes so much difference because you don't once you start to see unconditional self life, other acceptance, you learn to stop catastrophizing things, and you start to live very much in the now for healthy, better, better living, better connection with people, going towards your goals. You can work loads, you can be focused on what you do, all different things, but you've got this new outlook on things because you're seeing things as they are instead of the illusion of fear. And that became everything I wanted to do and, and, and all the work, work I wanted to do. I saw how much that had changed my own life with OCD and I wanted to make that change massively with OCD and anxiety in, in this community. Um, and so I was very much focused on doing this from a life life coaching direction of changing our life philosophies, changing how we observe fears, all these different things that I had seen other people in the life coaching industry go towards careers, success, go towards being motivated for a job, and then they were touching a lot on uh, fear. They were touching more on fear and things that hold us back, but directed towards careers and directed towards goals. And I thought, forget that. that of course, that's part of life and what humans want. But the most important thing is focusing on anxiety when it's consuming someone. It's all the same thing. OCD, generalized anxiety disorder, panic attacks are illusions of fear holding people back in a cycle that they feel they are chronically consumed. But it's a case of breaking down the fears. It's a case of looking at why you're scared and they vanish. It's an illusion. When you see it and you feel it, you realize it's an illusion. But it takes time to see that. It took me time to see that. It didn't happen instantly. So you've got to look at people that are recovering, that give you motivation. Why we do so much work around getting people to share stories about their recovery. When I was stuck, it was a nightmare. When I was stuck, I used to go onto forums. I used to spend ages in forums. And you used to go in forums and you'd find one recovery story for every thousand negative stories and the person would vanish. Because once they got better, they thought, forget, I don't want to talk anymore about OCD and off I go. So the hardest thing for me was speaking to people to get them to understand that sharing their story in the future will change lives. And collectively, more of those will change OCD. That is the key most important thing in changing OCD. You have got to, when you work and you get better and you improve, you don't have to be recovered, but share some things in Facebook groups, whatever, forums, whatever. Share some things about what you're learning. Changes other people's lives like that. Most of the information is so negative. Oh, I've been stuck like this for 20 years. Hang in there. Don't worry. The bad days, you get used to them more. That's disaster. That's not motivation. No one's going to feel wanting to jump out of bed to really go and grasp life when that's the outlook. Uh, something that I always saw that um, a lot of uh, Tony Robbins talked about and a lot of people talked about was you're not going to be motivated by extremely small goals. That doesn't mean you have to have huge goals. But if your goal's like, I want 5% improvement in OCD in 20 years, that ain't going to motivate many people. 
right? So you've got to really think, what's going to wake me up? Now, I'm not doing this from sort of some motivational spiel that doesn't have any reality-based facts latched to it. I'm talking about in reality. To really wake up and really go for it, you've got to feel motivated. You've got to really want to go for it. Now, that is definitely not going to be something so small. Of course, it's a one day at a time approach. Of course, it's like peeling off layers, layers of an onion with anxiety bit by bit by bit. But the problem is, if you don't set yourself, I want to make a big improvement to my anxiety, a big improvement to my life, you're not going to feel motivated to do it. So that's key. And these are all principles that made me so focused on changing the way a lot of this stuff was done. I wanted it to be a broad sense where people were sharing ideas to other humans. Hey, you know, that fear is an illusion. Do you know you can think of it like this? Oh, you know, you can draw on some philosophy here and look at stoicism and look at how that's exaggerated in your mind. And those principles, those things, all humans can benefit. All humans can reduce their anxiety. All humans can change their outlooks and perspectives on life. Why on earth? Do we go and say, okay, I've got an OCD problem, okay, I'll just speak to one person about it, learn a few things, and then off I go. If we can share it with so many other people and change all of their lives, why aren't we doing that? So I thought that's got to change. We've got to encourage people to share the positive things that they're doing so it empowers other people like that. I mean, I think rational living, rash, teaching rational thinking should be done straight in the schooling system. It should be stoicism, philosophy, all the rational thinking about life should straight be in the schooling system so people learn that. But that's not just that. It's about how we motivate ourselves. We've got to keep that fire going. We've got to really, really grab life. And that's a large part of it. That's why I come so much from that life coaching angle because that is so much the element. I was speaking to Nick the other day and I was saying to him, what do you think are some of the most important points in the OCD recovery journey? And, you know, Nick has done loads of videos for the channel uh, and he's got a great knowledge of all the different aspects of OCD. And, and he said to me, do you know what I think is one of the most, like really bluntly, he's like, do you know what I think one of the most important aspects of the OCD recovery journey is? It's like, like, it's like um, it's life structure, okay? And this is something that I'm always highlighting. And it was just, Nick was like, that's the most important. Bar none. Getting out of bed. Stop playing computer games. Not sitting on a laptop all day in bed. Not sitting on your phone all day in bed. Nick was a guy who was playing computer games, Call of Duty, at a competitive level, really high, one of the top people in that game, all day long, every day. And his life was so unhealthy. He was vaping and he was on the computer games all day long and he just felt crap and he was doing it to avoid the sensations of sensory motor OCD. That is not a direction you want to be going in life. That is a, a, a direction of coasting, a direction of avoidance and a direction of comfort chasing. And what I realised when I read a lot of Marcus Aurelius's work uh, was how much humans tra chase comfort and so much today in the modern world how much comfort sold to us. So once you actually start breaking down that comfort is this trap and that the things that you really want in life are the other is the other side of comfort, that's when you really wake up to seeing where you're trying to go with things. You've got to look at this OCD recovery journey as, yes, I wouldn't have wanted it. Yes, I wouldn't have most likely, if it's a genetic base, which it most likely is, that wouldn't have wanted those genes. But in reality, it's there. But what am I going to do with it? What am I going to change? Can I view this as some kind of gift? People are going to go, oh my God, a gift. How could you say OCD is a gift? But I've seen people say cancer is a gift. I've seen people that have got cancer, bone cancer, uh, where, they, where they are really, really t thinking initially like this is the worst thing that could ever happen. Tell me it was a gift. It woke up and changed my whole life perspectives. Over the years, I've worked with anxiety in all forms. I've worked with people that have got cancer, people that are terminally ill, people that have been in terrorist attacks where, where bombs have gone off. You see that story on yesterday's Instagram story by, by the girl Elena Ferns, who was at the Ariana Grande concert. Bomb went off. People were dead all around her and she uh, whole body froze, complete anxiety. She couldn't even move. Uh, post-traumatic stress set is set in. She couldn't even listen to anything about the bomb. She couldn't even watch anything about it. She couldn't even think about it. She was kept avoiding everything to a position now where it doesn't hold her back. 
right? All the physical symptoms have calmed down in relation to that and gone, right? Now, her situation, she's been at a bomb at the front at a concert she associates with one of the happiest moments of her life and then there was a bomb. She didn't want to be anywhere near concerts. She never thought she'd go to concerts again. Two years later, she was at the front of the next Ariana Grande concert, dancing, loving it, enjoying life, not anxious, back where the thing she ran from. That's change. That shows that in any circumstance, you can change. That shows whether you've got diseases, whether you've got life coming to an end soon, whether you've got been in a horrible thing like the Holocaust, Viktor Frankl situation, you can change this. It's a perspective shift of how you're viewing that situation. That is the core, that shift in the OCD recovery, generalized anxiety disorder, all of the anxiety disorders, that is at the core. Now, no one can make you walk this journey, you've got to walk it yourself. People can guide you, people can help you along the way, people can support you, but it comes from us. It's a journey that's walked within. It's a journey that's going to change within. The nervous system's fired up, scared, terrified because of all this illusionary state we're viewing things in. But inside, that can come down as you change your perspective, little by little, persistence, one day at a time, going for it, going for it, keeping it going, like that. And it builds. It's the same as if you work out. If you work out, and you work out once a week and all the thoughts behind your head is, oh God, I hate working out. It's not going to build up a, a pattern. But if you start doing it bit by bit, more and more, bit by bit, it becomes like a habit, like brushing your teeth. And then very, very soon, it becomes your way of living. Habits, we don't even notice we're doing them. We're doing thousands of habits all the time. Those are key to building up towards the recovery journey. Now, I hope this video has given you a good sort of structure to feel motivated and really go for it with this OCD situation. It's not a curse. It's not the worst thing that's happened to you in your life. It's the, one of the things that's been, that held you back the most in terms of moving forward. It's, when I say it's not the worst thing that's happened in, in, in your life, it's only our perspective of it, our perspective that it is the worst thing that can change to it being a better thing. It's not so bad. Being, oh wow, I'm learning so much from this. Oh, this is even a better thing. Oh, this is a great thing. To the same as those people that have told me and you see it, you can go online, you can read articles, there's tons of articles, people referring to cancer as a gift. I couldn't even believe that. And then I still sometimes think, how? But when you speak to them, when you see what they have learnt from that situation, you can see why. It's completely woken them up to life. The same for me. I was living in a very shallow surface level of life. I was very connected, I was, you know, and, 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 and I, was, I was very much enjoying life and going along, but it was very short-sighted, the things that we want, like most people. I was just thinking of uh, what, what, what's going on the next holiday, the next night out, and sort of very surface level. It wasn't like that, you know? I wasn't like, I was always aware of things, what life was, what life was like, and, and, and connecting with people, and compassion for people. I was always aware of those things, but it was much shorter version of life. It was so complete completely focused on such tiny, irrelevant things. But then when you really start looking for now, wow, oh my God, life isn't that long. Oh, what do I value? What do I want to do? Who do I want to be around? Who do I want to spend time around? What do I want to achieve? What really matters to me? It wakes you up in a completely different way. That was the gift of OCD to me. Changed my life. Completely changed my life. And that is the message that I wanted to share with you today because I want you to think about that and it can be exactly the same for you in terms of how you're viewing it. You know, it's so much negativity around OCD in general. Oh, you've just got to put up with it. You've just got to carry on for years. That's fucking terrible narrative for OCD because yes, yes, OCD, when you're learning to get better, it feels very up and down, but it's not something that's like crippling your whole life forever that you've got no chance of ever getting better. That's complete nonsense. So what you want to do is you want to look at what is it? Oh, it's an illusionary fear like state that holds you back internally in your mind when you're in those strongly held irrational beliefs and fears. Okay, but then if you weren't scared, would they be there? No. Well, there's the answer. And that was the key. And that's what came from so much of the work of the Stoicism uh, Albert Ellis and so many other people's work that I was looking at and learning from 
and then you see it, it really comes apparent. That's my message for today, guys. I will see you on the next Instagram uh, Live. Please check out our other videos on the YouTube channel, OCD Recovery YouTube channel. Tons and tons of videos on hope and motivation are going to be going up there, and there's already 500 plus videos on there. Um, so please check those out. Guys, great to see you all. I'll be back on another Instagram Live very soon. Take it easy.